In this video, let's take a look at simple validations in reactive forms. And before we continue, I want to request you all to go through the validation videos on template driven forms if you haven't already watched them. I have gone over in detail the form control properties for state and validity. We will be reusing the same concepts. Just a heads up in case you start to lose track of what is going on in this particular video. All right, back to reactive forms. Reactive forms include a set of validator functions out of the box for common use cases. And unlike template driven forms, in reactive forms, validation rules are specified in the component class instead of the template. I'm going to break this video down into three steps. First step, apply the validation rule to a form control. Second step, provide visual feedback for the validation. Third step, display the appropriate error message for the validation. Let's begin with the first step, applying a validation rule. Now to be able to use built-in validations, we need to make use of the validators class. So first, let's import it. Next to form builder, import validators from angular slash forms. Next, let's apply a simple validation rule to the username field. Username should be required. In the last video, we saw how to create a form model using the form builder service. We also learned that the first element in the array is the default value for the form control. Let me now tell you the second element in the array is where you specify the validation rules for the form control. To specify a required field validation, we simply add validators.required. So that is our first step, applying a validation rule to a form control. Second step is to provide visual feedback to the user that something is not right with the form control. Let's apply a red border to the form control when the form control status is invalid. That is when validation has failed. Now this is very similar to what we have done for template driven forms. So go back to app.component.html and to the input element for username, we are going to add class binding. The class we are going to bind to is the is invalid class from bootstrap. So class dot is invalid. And the condition is that the username field should be invalid and touched. To get a reference to the username field, we will start off from the main group that is registration form. So the condition is registration form dot get username dot invalid and registration form dot get username dot touched. The get method helps us to get access to the specific form control, which in this case is the username control. Now, if I remove the default value and if I go back to the browser, you can see that initially we don't have the red border. That is because we haven't touched the form field yet. If I click inside and click outside, you can see the red border. The form control state right now is both invalid and touched. That condition applies the is invalid class. So that is our second step, providing visual feedback. The third and final step is to display appropriate error messages. Again, this is exactly like how we have displayed error messages for template driven forms. I'm going to go back to the HTML and over here, we first add the message that we want to display. Username is required. Next, we add a class of text danger so that the font is red colored. Class is equal to text danger. Finally, we add class binding to the display none class from bootstrap. Class binding class dot d hyphen none. 
registration form dot get username dot valid or registration form dot get username dot untouched. So hide the error message if the username is valid or the username hasn't been touched yet. If I save this and go back to the browser, we can see that initially there is no error message. If I click inside and then click out, we get the error message. Username is required. All right, with that, we finish our third and final step. Now, we often come across form fields where multiple validation rules are necessary. So let's see how to specify more than one validation rule to a form control and display the appropriate error message. For example, let's apply a min length validation to the username field. Now to apply more than one validation, we need to convert the second element to be an array of elements. So the second element in the array now becomes an array itself. And within this array, we specify the list of validation rules. First rule is the required validation. And the second rule is the min length validation. So we have validators dot min length and we specify the min length as a parameter. So we need a minimum of three characters. Now, if I save this and go back to the browser, I enter two characters and tab out. You can see that we get the visual feedback and the error message. So our min length validation is working. The only problem is that the message is not appropriate. It should display username must be at least three characters and not username is required. Let's see how to fix that. I'm going to go back to app.component.html and for now we are going to comment out the existing error message. I'm going to start off with a div tag and use the ngif directive to conditionally render this element. And since we are using ngif and not the class for display none, the condition is the inverse of what we have. Star ngif is equal to registration form dot get username dot invalid and registration form dot get username dot touched. Within the div tag, we create separate messages for each error property. So we have the first message username is required and the second message username must be at least three characters. To conditionally display these messages, we use the errors object with the ngif directive. So for the first error message, registration form dot get username dot errors save navigation operator dot required. For the second error message, ngif is equal to registration form dot get username dot errors dot min length. So we check if errors object exists and then access required or min length. The question mark is the safe navigation operator. Now when I save this and take a look at the browser, you can see that initially there are no error messages. Click inside and click outside. We get username is required. Enter two characters. We get the min length message. Username must be at least three characters. So our error messages are being displayed appropriately. Now before we wind up with simple validations, I want to show you a small tip to keep the code short and simple. As you can see right now, we are using the username field in a lot of conditions. And you can write the code as we are doing right now, which is perfectly fine. But what I like to do is create a getter that returns a form control. Let me show it to you by creating one for username. So in app.component.ts, get username, which returns this dot registration form dot get username. Now in the HTML, I can replace 
all occurrences of registration form dot get username with just username. In doing so, you can see that the HTML looks a lot more cleaner and readable. Just a personal preference and is by no means mandatory. All right, now that we have understood how to perform simple validations in reactive forms, let's take a look at custom validations in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.